don't be intimidated by Google Vault. Here's how to use Vault to find the information you're looking for. Hi, my name is John Silwash. Welcome to the Google Admin Bootcamp. Let's perform an investigation with Google Vault. Step one is to visit Vault by heading over to vault.google.com. And you should come to a page that looks like this. If you can't get in or you don't see all of these options, you may not have the necessary permissions to access Google Vault. This is a very sensitive tool. You will potentially have access to every email and document within your organization. So there should only be a very select few people who can access Vault and perform searches like this. Check with your administrator if you're not able to get in. Now, I am not going to be touching on the setup of Vault. I have a separate video that will walk you through the setup process. If something isn't working or you're not finding the information that you're expecting, you may not have Vault set up correctly. So head over, check out that video um, and come back. Step number one is to click on matter. And a lot of the vocabulary in Google Vault is a little confusing. But it's definitely more legal uh, in nature and focus. A matter is simply an investigation. It's basically a folder. So we're going to create a new matter. And let's pretend that there's a student who um, is reportedly sending um, inappropriate messages to another student. I work in a school setting, and so this is a pretty common scenario. Um, so I'll just call this student uh, investigation. Um, the description you can specify, you know, who requested it, any pertinent information. Everything that you do, every action you take in Google Vault will be logged and audited. So it's very important that you document exactly what you're doing and why you're doing it. We'll hit the create button, and our matter is now uh, active. Now, if you have a retention policy specified, if it's a three year or a five year retention policy, every day, one day's worth of data is being removed from Google Vault. If this is a Freedom of Information Act request or a criminal legal investigation, it's very important that we temporarily suspend that retention policy so that we are not inadvertently destroying data that might be relevant to this investigation. So once I've created my matter, I'm going to go to hold and create a hold. And I'll name it the same thing, student investigation. And depending on what you're searching, you may need to do multiple holds. So I'm going to do Gmail. If you're only investigating an in certain individual or organizational unit, uh, you can specify that. Uh, I'm just going to do everything for the sake of simplicity. Hit continue. If, again, you have specific dates in mind or search terms you're looking for, you can specify that. If you want, that is optional. I just created a hold for Gmail. You would continue that process for chat and groups and drive if appropriate. If you're receiving a Freedom of Information Act request, that is you know, a legal document that you are required to comply with. It's very important that you act on that FOIA request immediately up until this point. You have to place that hold. Once the hold's in place, now you can take your time. You know that you're not inadvertently removing data from the vault uh, that might be relevant. So our hold will um, stay there. Let's go to the search field, and this is where we'll begin performing our investigation. You can search these Google services. Um, Google Calendar was also recently added. That will pop up here uh, soon. Let's go ahead and search for Gmail. And I happen to know the name of the students in question. So there's a student by the name of Polly who is receiving reportedly uh, threatening information from someone called Eustace. So I'll search for both of those names. I'm not going to see data from any other user. The more information you can gather, the better. So if you are receiving requests from um, you know, guidance counselors or building principals, you need to just ask them, say, hey, give me as much information you can. When did this incident occur? Who was involved? Are there any particular words that were uh, used? The more information you have, the more likely it is that you're going to be able to find what you're looking for. I'm going to keep it simple. Let's just say I only know the two students involved. I got my information filled in. I'm not going to fill anything out, and I'm going to hit the search button.
Now, this is why Google Vault is a very sensitive tool. I am now able to view every single email in the mailboxes of these two users. I can see everything there. If I click on it, it'll open up and I can see the full text exactly um, as it is displayed. The end user has no idea that this is happening. These investigations are completely transparent to them. This is much different than you know changing a password and logging in as that user. For that reason, it is very important that only a very few individuals have access to Google Vault and that you are very clear on what you are doing. Everything that is done in Vault is logged. The access logs cannot be changed and there is a paper trail. Now, this is a lot of information. <laughs> um, there's a couple of directions you can go here. You know, if you have a school principal who's like, hey, can you give me whatever you have on these two students? I'm just gonna be like, yep, sure, here you go. This is what I have got. Once I get to this point, I can save that search. Just name it after the students. And then I can share this search with the person who needs to review this information. This part here is particularly brilliant. Um, you can save this Google Vault search just like a Google document. So I would just enter the building principal and they would get an email and they can look at this search query. In order for the building principal, Dane, to access this search, he would need to have an administrative vault role. And if you look in the description for this video, I'll give you instructions on how to set up a special role. Dane or whomever you specify won't have access to everything, um, but they will be able to look at specific searches that you provide to them. Um, so that's an important step. I'll save that and he'll be able to go in and see that. Now, if I know more information, I can edit that query and get more specific. So let's say that I know the word hate was used in the email that was sent. So I'll add that term and I'll hit search and I'll get fewer hits. And um, I have set this up. So right here, this is the email in question that I was looking for that Eustace sent to Polly. Now, you can tell a lot from this email. Um, this is what was sent. And then if I go to show details, it specifies that it was sent from this person to this person. And the sender, Eustace, did send it. He deleted it, put it in the trash, and then he emptied the trash. This email does not exist in this user's inbox. If I were to log in as Eustace and go to his trash, I would not find this email. Google Vault retains emails and documents that have been deleted based on your retention policy. That is why it is such an important and powerful tool. Now we've just completed an email example. Let's do a Google Drive example. I'm gonna start a new search. We'll choose Drive as our service. Specify the two users. And again, I'm gonna add hate into the search parameters. This time I'm searching Google Drive and I can see all kinds of documents and forms. Um, and this is the, the document I was looking for. Again, satisfies our search criteria. So I can see exactly what was said. Now, Vault was not intended to be a disaster recovery tool. However, it can, in a pinch, be used as such. I have worked with districts where somebody, for whatever reason, don't even ask, deleted an important file, emptied the trash, it's gone, gone forever. I have been able to go into Google Vault, find that file. You can open it up and download it. It'll download as Word, PowerPoint, Excel, um, et cetera, and then re-upload it to Drive and convert it back. So it is certainly not the intended use case for Vault, but it can be done in a pinch provided your retention policies are configured correctly. 
Now I showed you how you can save um, and share a matter for an internal investigation if you need to provide data to a third party, such as law enforcement or the counsel for um, a parent or another individual, you certainly cannot give them access to your system. So what we'll do is save this, and then we will initiate an export. So I'm gonna hit the export button. This is going to export all of these files into uh, PDFs, Word, PowerPoint, Excel. When that export is ready, I can email a link to that export to the third party and they can download it and do whatever they want with that. Um, so we have two different processes. If you're doing an internal investigation, you can assign a vault role and they can look at it in vault. If it's an external investigation, you'll initiate an export and they'll just get a zipped file with the data, which they can uh, repopulate into um, Microsoft Outlook or Thunderbird or some other email client uh, for emails or um, download the, uh, the data through Microsoft Word formats. That completes our investigation. There is one more important step that I need to finish, and it's easy to forget this. When my uh, investigation is complete, I need to return Google Vault to its normal operating state, which means I need to remove the hold. So I'm gonna go, I'm still within my matter. Here's my hold, and you may have three or four of these delete this hold. I'm not deleting any data. I'm just saying, okay, I don't need to hold this data anymore. Take us back to our normal um, retention policy. Done. And then another important thing to do, especially if you have shared search results internally or to third parties, when the investigation is officially closed, you're going to want to go back to your matters and make sure that you close that matter. That will deactivate all of the shared search um, links that you have sent out for third parties or internally. We don't want anybody you know, just messing around in Vault and performing additional searches. That is effectively closed and done. Um, you can always go back and look at your closed matters, review what was done, reopen them if needed. There's an archive of everything that's in here. Um, the other thing you can do is to pull a report on who's done what in Google Vault. That's here in the Audit tab. Um, and it will show every action that's been taken in Vault, literally every button click, every login, everything that's done, and which user took those actions. I hope this has been a helpful overview of how to use Google Vault. Uh, you can check out my other video on configuring Google Vault. And if you'd like more in-depth Google admin training like this, join me for the Google Admin Bootcamp, my live virtual training that covers all aspects of the Google Admin Console. To learn more, visit googleadminbootcamp.com.